I've made a few videos about knowledge recently, uh, particularly to do with, well, what was, yeah, to do with kind of uh, in relation to feminist science and feminist epistemology. I'm just asking myself what that really meant. But one of the other terms that I keep coming across when I'm thinking about that is this, this, this um, idea of situated knowledge, which I, I kind of understand, but um, I don't understand fully, I don't think. I don't feel I've got a complete purchase on it. So, I mean, the first thing to say about the idea, well, in terms of its definition, situated knowledge is knowledge that has, it's an approach to understanding which uh, acknowledges that all uh, all knowledge is narrated from a, a speaking position. That's the idea of it, at least. That um, that particularly in relation to knowledge that are, that's kind of social facts, that kind of thing. The subjective position that you take to to those facts is going to affect your interpretation of them. Uh, so your position, your situation, your social location, if you like. Uh, produces a particular take on that knowledge and that's as I say sometimes referred to as situated knowledge uh, and that that understanding of situation feeds off well yeah kind of feeds into this, uh, this understanding of feminist epistemology but also features within um, uh, well, kind of post-colonial understandings of, uh, of ethnicity and how, how ethnicity relates to particular kind of knowledge gathering processes. But what I always think about when I come across this term situated knowledge, apart from not having a, a fully fledged understanding of it, is that it's, it's, this, it's this spatial metaphor that it's playing out in, really, which I have problems with, or, or which I can't help acknowledging, because as soon as you start saying that, that knowledge is situated, you are envisaging knowledge as being a kind of a series of objects or as a series of locations or as a series of entities in some kind of space and you're you're saying that the the knower or the person who's accessing that knowledge is uh, is singularly placed within that space you know i kind of imagine it as being in a field and looking around and there's there's all these items of knowledge arrayed around you and from where you're standing of course some of those items of knowledge are in clear view some of them might be in the shade some of them might be hidden behind other other uh, entities some of them might be so distant that they become blurry and indistinct or they might be uh, so distant that it's hard to distinguish one from another or they might be so distant that they're over the horizon of your understanding entirely um, and of course if you're standing in a different location in that space then a whole different set of alignments of those knowledge items uh, is relevant. You know, d different items of knowledge are closer to you and are more available, and so on. And so that, so the idea of situated knowledge really demands this highly spatialized um, schema, metaphorical schema for its understanding. And also some of the ways around. Well, another kind of metaphor which plays into that, and which in some ways. Uh, tries to avoid that is by um, instead of thinking about this these knowledge objects as arrayed in a plane on which you are standing you kind of imagine yourself rising above that plane so um, so you can look down on these objects from a greater and greater elevation and just as you know if you if you were in that position if you did you were standing in a field and you started to rise Sure enough, more knowledge objects would come into view. You'd be able to see over one object to the to what lay beyond it. You'd be able to see further uh, out to a to a more distant horizon. Um, you would have greater access, but you would still be uh, there would still be a certain sense of situation about you because your you know your your location the the alignment between these objects would still be the case. So although this vertical elevation, which we which you find played out in that famous quote, which is attributed to Newton, although I think it actually lies elsewhere, this to, this thing to do with uh, if I've stood on the shoulders of giants, no, if I have seen further than other men, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. I mean that's that's a, a almost literal playing out of this uh, metaphorical schema in which greater elevation gives greater access to imaginary objects of knowledge. So the 
the situation, the knowledge is still situated on the horizontal plane, but because you've risen through some kind of imaginary vertical plane, the, um, uh, the access to knowledge is greater. I think you get a further, yeah, it also features in, in things like the ideas of higher understanding or, um, yeah, all those kind of metaphors play out on that vertical plane as well. I think you also get this, the same metaphor starts to kind of unravel, I think, but it's still kind of struggled for in some writings. I know um, Donna Haraway uh, indicates that that uh, vertical dimension which she, when she talks about what she calls the god trick which is this idea that in some in some kinds of writing and i don't think she's specifically talking about empirical scientific writing but in some writing which um, aspires to the condition of of uh, empirical scientific objective writing uh, that the, the form that that writing takes suggests as if it has been written from an elevated position so it's, it, it sounds like it's been written, I'm not sure if I can say it any more clearly than that really, but, but some scientific, quasi-scientific writing sounds as if it's been written from an elevated position when it probably hasn't in actual fact. It's as, as situated as any other kind of, any other kind of um, social fact, certain kinds of social facts. But the, but the trick is that you assume the position of God, you, you you've, imaginatively rise above the surface of this of the earth on which these knowledge items are, are strewn and uh, and describe what you claim to see from that position uh, so she calls that the god the god trick uh, you also find it i think in a slightly more justified way in what's it called thomas nagel's writing he's writing about the philosophy of science and he says that um, the objective writing that or, the, or the, the the kinds of discourse which accompanies the expression of objective truths or you know that kind of aspiration at least uh, is the view from nowhere he calls it in a book called the view from nowhere and the idea is that in addition to being situated or rather than being situated at a particular location on a horizontal plane and as, a, as an alternative to being even just rising above that position, you kind of take the eye out of that entirely, or you detach this, you destabilize that visual metaphor, you just destabilize that situated, located metaphor entirely, and imagine what the view would be like from nowhere. There is no view, there is only the occupation of different kinds of spaces, there is only relationship between items of knowledge, there is no alignment, or no, or no specific alignment that would be inevitable if one was situated anywhere on that space including an elevated space i suppose the question for me there is is that knowledge still situated and i think there is an argument to be made that still sit that it, there is that situation that, that situatedness is unavoidable or or, or what do i mean now? i think i do mean that i think i, I don't really want to make a claim that that knowledge is relative or, or it's not one of those kind of claims but I think there is I think there is a, it is possible to make a claim that all knowledge is situated to the extent that however whatever kind of cosmic tricks you play with imaginary extra dimensions you know whether you imagine yourself rising from this two-dimensional plane and playing the god trick on the on the world or whether you imagine yourself kind of occupying a, a Thomas Nagel type fourth dimension where you're simultaneously everywhere and 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 playing the game of relations to understand um, facts and truths that way, or even if you conceive of different uh, additional kind of dimensions, you're always situated within the framework of your of the cognitive and indeed physical and material uh, game that you're playing. Uh, so it might be absolutely completely factually true and empirically and objectively verifiable. In the, in the most hard scientific way, the, the kind of truths that you're finding by this, these processes. But, you, but I don't think it's possible to ever claim that you're not situated in some kind of imaginary um, epistemic multidimensional space, I don't think.
not sure if that makes any sense at all actually. 